Yo, what is up? Welcome back to Javin Biology. This is actually the part two video for menstrual cycle, whereby we actually will do an example structured question regarding menstruation. Well, in the first video, we actually already went through what were the main things you know for menstruation. But if you missed the first video and you are still not that pro yet, now put the link down here. You can go and watch before coming back to join this to main question. Lot. So in a typical menstrual cycle question, you usually see these two graphs. Okay, number one showing thickness of the endometrium wall, number two showing the hormones throughout the menstrual cycle. Now, no matter it's which graph, first break it down into the four phases that we mentioned during the first video. Okay, so day one to five, menstruation, day six to around day 12, which is your repair phase, then day 13, day 14 like that, one day only one, ovulation, and day 15 to the last day 28 pre-menstruation stage. Now, once you've done that, for the level of hormones one, you need to do one more thing. It's because during here, it's hard to see like which line represents which hormone. So to make your life easier, now once you break down the four stages already, right, just write down F, O, L, P. Remember the four hormones in this specific order. So next thing is, Basically, the line that is highest in each of the phases is the hormone that we just written down. For example, during the first five days, this line is the highest, so that is FSH. And during day 6 to day 12, this line is the highest, so that will be estrogen. And during day 14, peaks for one day only, that will be your LH, the highest one. So this line is LH. And basically, the last one is P progesterone. So that's how we know which line represents which hormone. So just remember the FOLP that I taught you in the previous video. Okay, now we got the phases, we got the hormones. Okay, we are basically set to go for questions. Now, based on 4.2, name phases S and T during the menstrual cycle. So phase S, we have it here. That's basically the first five day, easy menstruation. Phase T over here, that's the last phase pre menstruation stage. Then the next question they say, in the space provided on 4.2, draw based on the following information if fertilization occurs. So the keyword here is fertilization. Now, if fertilization occurs, they say here, uh, condition of follicle on day 26 onwards, thickness of endometrium wall on day 26 onwards. So basically here they want us to draw right here. So remember, if fertilization occur, we need the corpus luteum, right? Because you're going to need progesterone to further develop the endometrium. Hence, this thing obviously will remain, so you just draw exactly the same thing and it will continue to thicken the endometrium wall and you just have to draw straight line. It will not go down, just straight. Yeah. That, that's basically how you draw that. Easy. Then the next question. State the main hormones you can during phase U and explain what happened. So phase U, now we're gonna look at phase U. So that's day six to day 12, also where we have the hormone estrogen. So that's the repair phase, isn't it? So that's what estrogen is for. Estrogen repairs, thickens the endometrial wall right after the estrogen. So, and then next question C. All right, this question a bit not directly related to the diagrams. So they ask here how contraceptive pills prevent process N from occurring. So remember, contraceptive pill is a pill that actually prevents pregnancy. So those couples that you know, want to do the thing but don't have baby, this is what they take. So process N, is, which is basically ovulation. So if you don't want to have baby, you cannot let, one of the things you must prevent from happening is actually ovulation, not because when there's no ovulation, no secondary oocyte, basically no fertilization. So remember, contraceptive pill, how does it actually prevent pregnancy? Because in it, it actually contains synthetic progesterone, which is artificial progesterone. So remember, this hormone has a negative feedback mechanism. So actually, it will inhibit pituitary gland from secreting FSH and LH. Without FSH, there will be no broadband follicle. Without LH, there will be no 
ovulation. Hence, fertilization does not take place and there will be no pregnancy. So basically, this is your answer. Okay, so you can just pause and write it down on yourself. Now, the next question, we're almost there. D1, name process Y. So now we're not going to look at the graph anymore. Okay, you have a ovary with oocytes and the follicles involved. So name process Y. So you can see the process of the secondary oocyte being released out. So this is definitely ovulation. Okay, before we proceed, now let's do a bit of labeling first. So process Y is definitely ovulation because you can see the oocyte coming out. So hence, this is the graphene follicle Z. It's also the graphene follicle. And then basically, after that, once I release the secondary oocyte, the graphene follicle will become something which is our corpus luteum. So that's the information you need to know like, before answering these kind of questions. So D2, name hormone that stimulates process in D1, 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 D1. So ovulation is basically here again. Ta -da. And if you don't know, actually this graph can help you for this question. You have luteinizing hormone, LH, that stimulates ovulation. Luteinizing. Yeah, always write the full name. Lah. That name structure, Zach, we already done that. That is the graphene follicle. And the last question, structure X degenerates after eight weeks. So your corpus luteum degenerates after eight weeks of pregnancy. Explain what happens now. This is actually not good because corpus luteum is the one that secretes progesterone, which is needed for the endometrium, for the embryo to develop. So now the opposite happens. There is no corpus luteum. So what you have to say, without corpus luteum, obviously there will be no progesterone, and the region will break down, and the embryo cannot develop. And hence, this is when miscarriage occurs because the baby will fall out together with the endometrium. So this is your answer law, okay? No progesterone, endometrium breaks down, embryo cannot develop, miscarriage occurs means the baby cannot form and that's the end of the pregnancy. Bye-bye. So that is it for menstruation already. I hope that these two videos actually make you understand more for menstruation. If you have any questions, you actually can ask me in the comment section or DM my Instagram. My name is Davin. This is Davin Biology and I'll catch you guys in the next video.